My guest today is Ed Charbonneau. Ed, how are you? Great, David. How are you doing? It's great to have you back. I'm doing great, by the way. <laughs> it's great to have you back on the show. It's been a while. I actually haven't seen you in a long time, but we did speak recently. Uh, you recently interviewed me for your podcast. Yes, actually I did. Tell us um, about your podcast. So my pod podcast is called Eat Sleep Code. It's the official Telerik podcast. Mm -hmm. So I do this podcast as part of our DevRel program in I talk to amazing developers from all over, including yourself. I was proud um, to be a part of that sentence. <laughs> so you get to come on the show and talk about uh, Microsoft's cognitive services and uh, what kind of solutions you can build with those. And we uh, had a lot of fun talking about the I different, um, you know, brainstorming ideas that we came up with of uh, all the fantastic uses you could uh, come up with with those. We'll, we'll we'll put a link in the show notes to that podcast so viewers can see that excellent show <laughs> and other ones. Yeah, uh, but we should talk about something else today. What should we talk about? So uh, kind of queuing off the uh, cognitive services, I've been dabbling with machine learning. Uh -huh. So we could talk a little about, bit about machine learning. Um, I'm far from the expert. Well, let's, so. oh, let's, let's start with that because <laughs> machine learning, uh, one, it's a hot topic right now. I, I, I know that if you add the words machine learning to your LinkedIn profile, your spam will go up exponentially. People yeah. are looking for data scientists and machine learning experts. And and you're saying, what was your level before you started studying this? So I'm in it for the clickbait. The clickbait. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, so my, my level going in is uh, I'm just really interested as a geek to find out what I'm capable of doing as a developer who knows absolutely nothing about machine learning but understands full stack web okay. development. Okay, so, so you're an experienced developer with no experience at all. It's machine learning, and one day you said, you know what, I'm going to tackle this thing. Mm -hmm. what? Yeah, because I can see it being used in so many things that I'm, I'm already using day to day. Uh, you see Cortana uh, mm -hmm. with uh, the ability to do speech recognition, right. HoloLens to be able to do the uh, capability of finding surfaces within the room. It's amazing. And uh, just understanding a 3D space. Mm -hmm. um, all of those things... Uh, to my understanding, fall into uh, AI or machine learning. Right. So I'm seeing all these applications for it, and I'm curious as a developer, how do I get involved? And uh, with my understanding of it, which is very little, how far can I take that? In how did you? Use it? What, what was your first step? Uh, so I did a little research into Azure machine learning. Mm -hmm. um, there are some. Excellent videos out there, but I'm more of a hands-on person, so I kind of skip past those, right. <laughs> which is probably bad advice. Um, but there's some really cool tutorials that they do with Azure Machine Learning Studio, where it shows you step-by-step -step in a very um, animated way, uh, where it just kind of shows you how to drag widgets onto the design surface right. and connect the dots. And then I had to kind of read about what each of those components did and, and what their role is and building a machine learning. Right. Uh, I, I had the same experience. I, I've been through a couple of those tutorials, and they they do make things easier. They, they take care of some of the stuff that we used to have to write a lot of code for, like getting data or splitting up data into um, you know test versus uh, modeling data or mm -hmm. filling in uh, what to do with incomplete data. You know things like that. You can do that with properties, but you still have to understand the concepts of machine learning and to yes. know which shapes to drag and how to, how to arrange them and what properties to set. So I had the uh, amazing opportunity to talk to Jennifer Marsman on the podcast as well. She's um, a very smart lady. Yes, extremely. And her expertise is in machine learning. Yeah. Uh, so Jennifer taught me just by being on the podcast enough to be dangerous. Enough right? to get started. Uh, so the general concept that I understood was... Did you teach had, her to read minds? <laughs> yes. She, <laughs> she did tell me how she... Uh, did the mind reading. Um, so her program was, uh, how do you say it, um, uh, like a lie detector is what right. she built, right? So by listening to her story about how she built her, her mind detecting algorithm, um, I kind of understood the basics. Right. Okay, so you need lots of data. Uh, so um, in the machine learning library, they have some examples that you can use. So I grabbed a credit reporting uh, library of data, so it's mm -hmm. lots of credit data okay. and whether those loans were paid off or not. Hmm, okay. Um, so the other thing I understood about the machine learning is that you need to uh, train a certain portion of the data right. and then validate against another part of it. So you split the data up, say 70-30, 70% mm -hmm. goes towards training the machine learning algorithm. 
then the other 30% goes back and validates whether uh, the algorithm understands the data enough to um, find those values. Um, right. In the Tells you the num data. number of uh, false positives and false negatives and yeah, true absolutely. positives, true negatives, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, just by what you said there, you know, false positives, true negatives, and, and all of that, um, there's a widget that you drag into the interface, and it scores your model. Hmm. Uh, so I had no clue what the, those numbers meant. Wow. Uh, so uh, thankfully, there is some help that you can find in the tooling. So if you drag one of these widgets onto your design surface, uh, there's a little help button that you can click and lots of words will come up that you don't understand, <laughs> and you can look up the definitions to those. And, and eventually, with enough persistence, you can build some really cool stuff with very limited knowledge of what you're doing. Oh, very limited when you started, though, but I think mm -hmm. it sounds like when by going through this process of building a machine learning model, uh, it increased your understanding of actually what machine learning is. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm the kind of learner that likes to just jump in head first. Right. Like jump into the deep end of the swimming pool and hope you learn how to swim. Right? <laughs> so There's no uh, risk in that. <laughs> like I said, there's plenty of great video material out there and courseware that you can take online. I believe there's actually like free academic courses that Microsoft's offering. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I skipped right up past all that and yeah. got hands on um, and jumped in and start dragging, dropping things on the surface and just reading through okay. the documentation as I went. You were, now was your goal just to increase your overall knowledge or did you have an end goal in mind what to do with this machine learning? Yeah, so I wanted to increase my overall knowledge of it for one. Um, I don't expect to be an expert in it. Uh, it's a very huge field. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even believe I may have the statistical knowledge to back up uh, doing something like that is there's a, a, a 47.2 percent chance that that's true <laughs> <laughs> right so um, you know even my background doesn't really support me doing this professionally right because you're more of a front-end uh, guy right yeah more of a front-end uh, ASP.NET MVC developer um, hmm. does machine learning know? have any relevance yeah to so a front -end developer? that was one of my goals right is to understand how this new technology plays its role in this, the full stack that I'm used to, meaning uh, you have a database, you have a server side uh, business layer, and then a client side uh, HTML layer. Hmm. Um, so wh where does machine learning fit in all of it? And how can I understand it better? So if I'm on a team that has a database layer and a machine learning layer and a front end uh, web layer, um, how can I talk to those team members that are, are the professionals using this stuff better? Right. You know, if I understand at least the basic concepts of what they're doing. Well, what, what in, you said machine learning layer, like how, how do these pieces fit together? Like what, uh, how, how would a, if you're building a front end application, um, how are you going to use machine learning? So if you think of uh, an application prior to machine learning, you mm -hmm. may have uh, you know, a SQL database, and right. then you have your business logic layer that may be in, embedded in your uh, ASP.NET MVC application. Uh, you know, some of that logic may be in a controller, or if you have more separation of concerns, you may have uh, some extra business logic. Mm -hmm. uh, with Azure Machine Learning, you're going to have an additional uh, web service that you're calling into the back end of your application and then interfacing with. Uh, say MVC or some other server-side technology. I would prefer MVC myself because that's what I'm an expert in. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would talk to the web service that is the machine learning algorithm. What is, so what does that web service do? Is it running all of your uh, uh, your, your algorithm again? and Or is it... Um, so it's, what, what's, what's the input and the output of this web service? Yeah, so it's kind of a three-step process. You build your machine learning... Uh, uh, experiment, mm -hmm. um, and then you validate it, mm -hmm. and then you create your your machine learning uh, model, and your predictive mo your predictive model All is right. built. Uh, once you have that, you actually literally click one button in Azure Mach Azure Machine Learning Studio. Uh -huh. Some people um, call that ML Studio. Yeah, ML Studio. One button click that says deploy web service, and this goes back in uh, analyzes your uh, predictive model and attaches two endpoints to it. One is an input, one is an output. Uh, the input feeds data into the algorithm and then the output gives you the results from it. 
Oh, okay. So uh, if I can paraphrase that, it's not going to run the entire model again. Like if you're pulling in hundreds of thousands of rows of data mm -hmm. and analyzing that data and trying to come up with some predictive model for it, right. it's not. It, you do that ahead of time. Basically, yeah. you do that once That's the, and then click the button. Yeah. Now you have a web service and it knows what that resulting algorithm is, what that predictive model is, which would run a lot quicker because it doesn't have to crunch through a lot of data. Yeah, you just put it in, an input, uh, essentially one row of data. Mm -hmm. Say, so here's the inputs. What are the expected outputs based on what I learned earlier? Is that is that a fair Yeah, uh, I think you summed it up summary? perfectly. Yeah, you've got those three steps. Uh, the training, the actual model, like you said, you don't have to retrain. You can, after you collect more data, you can retrain. But, okay. Um, but the user's not waiting for that. Right. So if you're building a UI, uh, they don't want to sit there and wait for you to crunch through a lot of data. They want to take advantage of the data you already we've already crunched through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, the Azure ML Studio will give you uh, those actual times of how long it took to make the web request, request as well. <clears throat> so if it's, you know, 0 0.05 seconds, it'll tell you, you know, mm. how, how quick that is happening. Um, so once you have that piece, um, you do need some kind of server side uh, technology as far as I can tell, uh, because there are machine key or uh, there are private keys that are involved. Ah, okay. Um, so you don't, so you you could don't want call to open from, that up to your JavaScript. You could account, call it from right? JavaScript, but then you're passing these keys yeah. across the internet, which is yeah. not real secure. It would be very hard to secure those, right. and uh, something is uh, open as JavaScript in the browser. Sure. So um, I would assume there's some sort of uh, server-side technology involved in kind of arbitrating between uh, the machine learning and um, your front end. So you'd have some kind of little bit of a middle layer that maybe does some mapping between uh, the inputs that you're gathering from the web side of things okay. and then sending that off to uh, Azure to do the processing and get your result back. I see. Uh, are you are you going to build some real world stuff with this? So I'm building not so much real world stuff, but at least a very robust demo. Okay, because you're an evangelist. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're all about the demos. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm working Evangelist for, for Telerik. For Telerik, uh, actually, we are, as a company, Progress. Oh, sorry. Uh, and <laughs> but Telerik the... is now the brand of products Got that it. I represent for Progress. I see. Um, but, yes, uh, the, pro the products uh, from Telerik, like ASP UI for ASP.NET, uh, UI for ASP.NET Core. So we fully support ASP.NET Core now. Mm. So we have our 80 plus uh, UI controls, charts, graphs, grids, you name it. Those are all. Run those supported. on Linux now. Yeah, you, they run on Linux. They run on Apple, uh, and you can uh, develop and deploy uh, any cross-platform style you'd like with our UI controls. Uh, we're also uh, in the middle of launching our Kendo UI for Angular product. So hmm. it's in release candidate now, okay. and we're looking to uh, fully release that soon. And if you are an Angular developer, then you'll be real excited because we're coming uh, to the Angular community with Very all cool. those wonderful controls that we build. Uh, and they are written from the ground up using Angular. They're not wrapped jQuery components like a lot of other vendors are using. Interesting. Oh, okay, I'll take a look at that. Actually, I'm doing, I just got word uh, last night that I'll, I'm giving an Angular talk in Transylvania next month. Mm -hmm. So who wouldn't be excited about that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so my, my end goal to all of this yes. is... Uh, for, you know, the, the learning part on my own, just to understand it, but the project that I'll, I'll build will uh, give me fuel to write lots of articles uh, mm -hmm. about this. And I plan on starting with, you know, some basics about the machine learning. Mm -hmm. And then once the demo is built, then I can front end it with all kinds of cool stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I can build a, a UI for ASP.NET Core application and show people how to use uh, some of our really cool uh, drop-down components and stuff. So it's a uh, credit scoring app that I'm writing. Okay. So you can imagine, you, you know, you open your bank account and you have some extra inputs that you enter on top of your account and it tells you whether you're pre-approved for a loan or not based hmm. on uh, the data you provided and the data it has about your account. Oh, that's uh, the, so that's the predictive analysis that you're doing. Mm -hmm. the, the data you got had information about I don't know, uh, salary and employment history and neighborhoods and credit history, yeah. right? Yeah, and, but the, and the output and is, what's your credit score? Are you approved? You know, maybe it's just a binary, yeah, <laughs> approved, so deny. A lot of it is your credit history, so okay. your credit score, 
uh, whether you've devol- defaulted on some loans or not, right. um, how many years you've worked in a job. Okay. Uh, so some of these things may be manual inputs. Some of them may be something that you would, you know, just using our imagination, you know, get from a credit bureau as a sure. web service, mm-hmm. um, and then put that in a user interface, and you know, we can show nice charts and graphs on this is uh, your credit score and whether that's good or bad. Uh, you know, using Kindle. Oh, there you go. Now, you, now you're the full stack. Mm-hmm. Now you've, you've tied together the front end, nice visualizations, Absolutely. input output with this relatively complex back end uh, to do machine learning and predictive analysis. Yeah. Um, and we are fortunate enough at Telerik to have UIs for Xamarin. Uh, we have uh, Native Script, which is another way of building uh, cross platform. Yeah, that's, 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 that's your own uh, tool, toolkit for that, mm-hmm. right? So we're, we're hoping to, to write some front ends for that as well so we can show just this wide range of uh, ways that you can interact with this Azure uh, machine learning web service we create. Very cool stuff. Uh, other people, I'm, are, I know there's a lot of people out there that are where you were a short time ago, that they, they know machine learning is a big deal, they want to learn it, but they, haven't, they don't have any experience in it. What, what would you say to them? Where should they go? Um, I would go to uh, the Azure Machine Learning uh, website okay. and uh, just look through some of the documentation that's there. Like I said, there, there's lots of stuff there uh, as far as videos, mm-hmm. uh, documentation, um, just get hands on with it. Um, as soon as you start it up, there's a, a button that says uh, watch a quick tutorial, I think. Okay. Um, and when you hit OK, it literally like, takes the interface and, and you watch it drag and drop. Oh, it's a screencast. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And you can, you know, kind of follow along mm-hmm. in your mind, like, okay, these things get dropped here and then you connect the dots and mm-hmm. then you, that's where it kind of gets fuzzy. You have to know what each of those components does. Okay. But, you know, like I said, there's uh, a way to click on those components and hit help and you get a really good explanation of what the component does and what all the inputs and outputs are from that component. Um, the hard part is, uh, knowing some of the definitions that are in there you may not have seen before. Right. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of statistical analysis terms that you may not be familiar with if you're uh, a software developer, but maybe not coming from that statistical background like I am. Hmm. And um, you uh, t- you have an online presence. Well, first of all, you have a podcast. Where, where's your podcast? Yes. Uh, so you can really find everything about me at developer.telerik.com. I see. That is our uh, DevRel uh, blog for all of the awesome people that are on my team, like uh, Sam Basu, Jen Looper, uh, Bork Holland, the whole group is just lots amazing. Of smart people. Yeah, lots of smart people. So if you're looking for stuff on Xamarin or Native Script or ASP.NET, you'll find us there. You'll find the podcast there. If you have a user group, you'll find information on how you can get some swag for your group there. Huh. Uh, so developer.telerk.com is where it's at. Uh, you can find me on Twitter by my name at Ed Charbonneau and uh, edcharbonneau.com as well. So uh, you can find me fairly easily online. I have a pretty unique last name. So uh, quick search will turn up lots of things, <laughs> lots right. of positive things. <laughs> Ed, thanks so much. Thanks a lot, David. Really appreciate you having me on the show. So I talked a lot about machine learning on the show, and hopefully that technology hasn't made your friends and you just don't know it yet. So they could be uh, a bot existing in the cloud somewhere, maybe you are too, and we're all just part of a big machine learning algorithm.